Hi there, welcome to HSC. I'm Brian Sanders. And you know, we get asked this question a lot about what's the timeline? What things do I need to do to buy a spraying drone and actually implement it? Like what's the most efficient way to do that? So I'm putting this video together for all y'all out there that are wondering, although we're mostly talk things about USA customers, but international customers will benefit from this as well. So we're gonna talk about a couple different things. Let's just jump right in. All right, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to pick your aircraft, narrow down to whatever features and benefits and perks and pricing and capabilities that that machine has. The reason that's so important is because it's going to direct you in which regulatory path you're going to go down. Now, in the United States, that's classified by a weight class of either over 55 pounds or below 55 pounds. When they talk about that weight class, by the way, it's really about the actual weight of the aircraft while it's flying. So even though some aircraft that weigh less than 55 pounds when they're empty, no battery, by the time you put a battery and chem in them, they're over 55 pounds. In that case, you would go for an over 55 pound exemption. We'll talk about that in a sec. International customers, check with your local regulatory authority. Most of them, most of them, like the international standard is above or below 25 kilo. Okay, so really, really close to the US standard. All right, now, once you've picked your aircraft, the most important thing to do, and I can't stress this enough, like you should have done this yesterday kind of type thing, okay, is submit your regulatory petition or your exemption request or your application, depending on what the verbiage is that your regulator uses, you got to start that ASAP, okay? Uh, it, it's just so critical because that's the part that takes the longest, from the time you say, hey, I think I'm ready to start using drones. I wanna get some of these benefits and these perks and I know it's the next thing and I know it's transforming the application business and farming as we know it, I'm ready to jump in. And then you call us and say, okay, I'm ready. And we're like, oh, we gotta do this FAA thing, okay? I'm gonna to talk to you about that too. We've got a special way around the FAA altogether that we're gonna talk about, okay? Um, and if the FAA is watching, don't, don't worry, we're doing everything legally, okay? Um, anyway, we'll come back to that. I know you're like, what's he talking about? Uh, so your regulatory process, you want to start as soon as you identify the aircraft, you want to get that going. Okay. Then there's generally two different aspects in the United States. It's the FAA exemption, which is all about your aircraft and your skills as a pilot. Okay. Aircraft and pilot skills or operator skills. Then you've got a state applicator's license that's managed by your state or maybe your region or your county. Sometimes there's different ones for different counties. That is all about your safe and effective handling of chemicals. So FAA manages aircraft and operator proficiency. State manages the handling of chemicals. Those both happen simultaneously. So while you're in the queue for the FAA, you're going to be working with your state regulator, whoever manages that Department of Ag, Environmental Protection Agency, whatever that, that version is for your particular state. You're going to start working on, on that with them. Most of the time, it's a, it's a book that you'll read, like a, an actual book. There's an exam. Generally, it's closed book, so be, be ready to go, okay? One thing that's really great to know, especially if you're going to use drones to provide a spraying service, one thing that's awesome is a lot of states have what they call reciprocity, which means if I have my aerial applicator's license in Michigan, for example, I can have a quick test out to any state that is on reciprocity with Michigan. So I don't have to go through the whole dang process and the studying and the, all of the tests and the exams and all that stuff. I can just say, hey, I'm from Michigan. Here's my aerial applicator's license. And they'll tell me whatever shortcut version I have to do for their state. Cool, really great. All right, now going back to the FAA, we actually provide, well, I'll back up. When we talk to the FAA, we see timeframes that are anywhere between like 60 days, which is really fantastic, all the way up to like six, seven, eight, nine months, which is crazy long. Okay. That's why we say like start yesterday, start yesterday. One of the things that's um, that's really paramount and what the FAA has told us takes the caught is the contributing, the number one contributing factor to delays is people submitting their applications with errors. It's a lot to figure out. And I get it. Like the first time we submitted a petition, this was in 2015, maybe. We were like, what is all this? So we actually created a division that actually helps our customers go through the whole process. We do all the paperwork. We build the safety cases for the FAA. 
we had all the correspondences and all that stuff because we know we've submitted more than 150 of these in our tenure. And we know that it really, really, really helps customers. Our exemptions get approved. They've got, we've got, I, I think we're at a hundred percent. We might have one that didn't get approved because the customer changed whatever, but anyway, we're really, really stellar at it. Uh, and our intent is that you get operating and proficient and lawful and safe and all that stuff ASAP. So we provide a service that does that. Okay. You can get in touch with us, go to our website, learn more about the different packages and their pricing and all that. Okay. So that's regulated. That's regulatory. Now, the next thing you want to think about as you plan this out, you've got to do two other really critical things. Okay. Before it comes time to spray. We don't want you having to sandwich all this stuff together when it's go time, like when the season starts and you've got to be out there spraying. We want you proficient and more than anything, like confident, right? Like confident in your process. You know what you're doing. You understand how the aircraft works. You've got all of your stuff ready to go. That makes such a big difference so that you can actually hit the ground running at near max proficiency, max productivity. You know, you've already gone through all of the things that, okay, I think I want to land and refill and I want to do this, or I'm going to have this person do that. So you can kind of start thinking through the whole model. So the next thing that you want to do is come to training ASAP. So pick out the drone, buy the drone, start the FAA, and then register and attend our training. That training class is going to shave you so much time, shave off, I should say, so much time from you having to fumble in the field on your own. You could buy a drone and, and figure out how to use it 100%. You could read through the manuals and go through YouTube and all that stuff. But like come out to Florida at our location. First off, it's sunny and it's beautiful and everyone loves coming to Orlando. Um, but really come out and you'll sit down with experts. We really are America's agriculture drone experts. And we'll sit down and walk through and have you start thinking about the things that probably aren't even on your radar yet. You have a chance to ask all your questions of here's my environment and here's, here's the business model I want to set up. How do you think I should do this and that? It's just infinitely valuable. Okay, so come get trained. Then as soon as you get back from training and you have your aircraft, you're going to want to go out and do your calibration. We're going to have a whole separate video on this coming. But the cal and by the time you're watching this, we already might have one. So check that out. Okay, um, but the calibration is really important because based on the nozzles, the chemical label is going to recommend the right types of nozzles to use, right? Especially when drift mitigation is important, then you've got to use the right kinds of nozzles. The nozzle itself impacts the swath, okay? You need to know your flow rate so you can achieve your actual application rates, and you need to know your swath so you can set up your right flight plans. So there's a whole process that you'll go through when you get the aircraft that you'll go out and calibrate. So you can stand there either to the EPA or to your customers if you're providing services for hire and say, no, I know it's solid. I know I've got 10 meters of swath width or 25 feet or whatever the number is. And I know I'm right at 2.9 gallons per acre. Okay, so that's really critical. And then the whole point of this, y'all, is that by the time it comes time to hit the button to go, you're ready to roll. Okay, the winter time is our most busy season because people start understanding like, Oh yeah, I want some time. I want some downtime to be able to practice all this stuff and get myself savvy, right? So really, I, I recommend you start, you know, ASAP. Here's the super, super, super cool kind of trick up the sleeve, okay? That I'm going to tell you about. Now, um, the FAA is concerned about aerial applications. And I know it's kind of weird because some booms, some tractor boom sprayers actually are higher up than a drone flies at. I know it's kind of weird, but it's, you know, the regulations are what the regulations are. Okay. And we're committed that you operate inside of them because we don't want you exposed to a bunch of risk or fines or losing your business. Okay. So that's why we're hundred percent advocates for doing things the right way. But there's a product that actually allows you to take advantage of all of, not all, but the vast majority of benefits that come with spraying drones, but is not regulated by the FAA. I know you're like, what? How could that be, right? Okay, so there's a, a, a field robotic tractor that we're just now launching. Depending on when you're watching this video, we might've had it for years by then, right? But it's called the R150. You'll find links in the YouTube and it's all on our website, hse-uav.com. But the R150 is fully autonomous, okay? So you have all the convenience and the benefits of planning missions and having it repeat things with centimeter precision, which is fantastic. You can also have it follow you. So this little machine sprays, 
It's got two air, sorry, I get really excited. It's got two air blaster sprayers that are 360 degree configurable, adjustable droplet size as well, super important. Uh, and then it also has a hauling attachment. So you can pull the sprayer and the tank off 28 gallons or 330 pounds of payload, okay? You can take the tank and the sprayer system off and then you've got a hauler. So now you've got a little robotic tractor, okay? It's about, it's a little bigger than the size of, of a lawnmower, okay? To give you an idea of its size. You, when you see it online, it'll give you more of a, of a, uh, a, a context for its size. But that little rig is so awesome. So you can program routes just like you expect with drones. You still get the benefits of reducing operator exposure because that thing's going out by itself. Carbon neutral, electric, it's battery propulsion, right? All that stuff is, a, is really important to a lot of people. You can get to some pretty tough areas. The clearance, you can adjust the ground clearance of this thing. Um, and it's tough. It's a tough little machine. So if you're harvesting, say that you're pulling, or you've got tools or uh, parts or whatever you're hauling around, you can also set it up to just follow you. And it stays two meters behind you and will just follow you. So you can load it up and then move down the road or whatever you're doing. You can also, this is one of my favorite things about it, is when you're doing something, say that you've got something that you've got to harvest or whatever, and you need it to go back to production or you got something you got to take to the barn or whatever, you're going to hit a button and send the tractor back home. Okay, whoever's there can unload it. They radio back and say, okay, we're good, Brian, bring her back. And I can hit a button and the R150 will come back to me. And it's just so cool, right? The productivity, the efficiency, um, it's just awesome. So a lot of the same benefits of, of the automation, the ease, the precision, the repeatability, the less labor uh, costs, less applicator exposure, you get all those same benefits, but you don't have to mess with the FAA at all. You do still have to have your state chemical license. You got to take that test, but that's pretty easy. So anyway, on our website, hse-uav.com, okay, or on our YouTube page, you can find out a bunch of stuff about the R150, about our FAA consulting services. We have leasing and financing, or you can give us a call and talk to one of my experts, okay, 309-361. 7656. Again, 309 361 7656. We're located in Castleberry, Florida. Uh, and, you know, we've been doing, we've been in the commercial drone industry since 2009. And a lot's changed, as you can probably imagine. But the agriculture space, we really, really, really are America's experts. And why do I say that? Because I think we've got a key philosophy that's pretty unique. You know, everyone loves the drones and the technology of the drone itself. But what really matters, if you really sit back and think about it, is the application quality, the efficiency, the efficacy itself, right? Pattern uniformity, all those things. The, you, we really think that it's first an applicator vehicle or a vessel first, and then second, it's a drone. It's got to be fabulous as an applicator. It's got to be awesome and just kick butt as an applicator before it could really be a drone. Okay, so that's a really key philosophy distinction in our company. So I do invite you, check us out online. If you haven't talked to one of us, oh my gosh, give us a call and we'll really help bring you into the whole world of our years and years and years of expertise in that and help get all your questions answered, okay? So thank you for watching this. I hope it was really valuable. And you can subscribe because we're always doing vlogs and stuff like that. So by all means, anything that we can do, talk to you soon, okay? Thanks again. Bye.